All right, hope everybody's having a good Saturday. This is a video on a new saddle I'm trying out that I'm probably gonna actually end up sticking with. I like it pretty well so far. You can probably tell from this side already, it's a specialized power model. And they, they look pretty strange. They're about uh, two, three centimeters shorter than a conventional saddle. And from the top, you get a better idea of it. Uh, it's pretty wide and short. It's almost in between like a triathlon saddle and a conventional one. Fairly large cut out in the middle. This is one of the cheaper ones. It's uh, whatever the entry level one is. It's got a little bit thicker uh, padding here versus the higher up models, which I actually like the uh, more padded one here. Uh, so I'll show you what I was coming from before. The super weird looking Selly SMP dynamic with the bird beak on the front there you can see. Not a real common saddle, but I liked it pretty well. I ran it for five years. It's also got fairly large center cutout. Very minimal padding though, maybe like a Selly Italia SLR. But uh, let me go over some of the details of the power installation set up on the bike just because I found it a little bit more challenging versus a conventional saddle. Uh, so first things first, if you're doing this, set the bike up completely 100% level between the axles and a trainer or you're really just wasting your time. Do it carefully and it'll pay off. Uh, so you can see here, measured with a piece of plexiglass on it, about five degrees nose down from tip to tail, which interestingly enough correlates to the rail flat portion of the rail there itself being level to the horizon so that might be an interesting way to cheat a little bit setting this up so the ones i've set up for these for people for fits surprisingly to me have been anywhere from one degree nose down to maybe six or seven so there's gonna be some individual preference there but what's what's important here is the part you're actually sitting on is probably more like this area here. It's kind of front two thirds of it. And you can see there, I reads closer to zero degrees. So that's kind of what's important is the part you're actually sitting on is going to be close to zero, or maybe a little bit nose down. You can see on the old one here, sat more in the middle of uh, the saddle and at five degrees nose down that one's got that part fairly level with that weird up kick in the front there which you're not really sitting on that part so big nose on this one really minimal front overhang on the power now as far as that's level there as far as the setback of it that's the part that's challenging so I think I measured on this maybe four centimeter difference as far as like if you came back and drew a line just vertically up from the bottom bracket and then measured back to the tip of the saddle that'd be set back so this right now is probably seven or eight centimeters um so the way i figured it out was to put new saddle on top of old uh hopefully i can get a good perspective here so what i usually do is i'll put one on top of the other and then move them until those kind of the wings where your sit bones are supported line up pretty close and then kind of see the difference in the overhang there and you can see that's a pretty good bit i think specialized recommends setting the power up about three centimeters aft of where you would the normal saddle and now the cell smps are weird because they've got even more front overhang than a conventional one so i had more more difference there but point being uh line them up like so with that little uh curve right along there where the sit bones go and then measure the difference of new saddle versus old and that'll that got me really close i think i ended up doing i don't think i even did a four aft adjustment once i rode it yesterday so that brings us to uh to height so I went ahead and bolted it on and measured height, you know, conventionally just from center of bottom bracket to the top of the saddle. The, 
the hard thing is like, where do you measure to? Okay. So what I usually do is I measure through the center of the seat rail, what Steve Hogg recommends to the top of the saddle, but measurably I got one centimeter difference versus that old silly SMP doing it that way. So basically what I did is I just went to ride, uh, raised it up until it felt a little bit weird pedaling and backed it down five millimeters, which I, was, I recommend because you can really get in a, I don't know, a real conundrum with numbers, doing too much measuring and not enough testing on your own. With saddle setup, I find the same for doing fits. Uh, you gotta ride it and do a little bit of back and forth trial and error to really figure it out. So what I did end up doing was coming back and measuring it after I set it up to find some similarities. And what I, what I ended up doing was I measured a few different spots of width along the saddle, like one at 50 millimeters width here, uh, 75 in there, and then 90 millimeters wide in there. And 90 millimeters is kind of where your sit bones start to hit because they measure, you know, saddle sizers measure you at like a 110, 115 millimeters here. The saddle itself is 143 millimeters. But as you're riding, your hips rotate forward, kind of like a curved rocking chair surface. So you end up on the narrower part of those sit bones and your pelvis coming forward. So the one I found most consistent with the old saddle was the 75 millimeter wide point. So what that would mean is that, you know, it's right there. So you'd run the tape from the center of the bottom bracket there up and to this point that you were just looking at, you can mark it with masking tape or something like that. And that ended up being most similar. So I, I documented a few different ones though, just for future use in case something slipped or anything weird like that. But that's uh, not the easiest saddle to set up, but it is fairly comfortable so far and allows a good bit of uh, forward uh, hip rotation there. This is, it, you know, one of the things that they'll also, usually tell newer riders like roll your hips forward or belly button towards the top tube that sort of thing assuming you have the hip joint flexion range of motion for it it's going to give a uh, a lower torso position if you have chosen to do so depending on how your bars are set up but anyway and when you're done get a silver sharpie or a black sharpie depending on your bike make marks for seat height seat setback on each side of the clamp and then you can, I haven't marked this one yet, but rotation you can do just with that interface there, a continuous line so you can see if it slips or not. And write this down in your journal somewhere so you're not looking for a Walmart receipt with your seat height written on it. Don't make that mistake. Anyway, hope that helps setting these up. And fair warning, I did not check other videos on this topic beforehand, so there might be an identical video to this out there somewhere and I'm not aware yet. Anyway. Thanks, guys.